Hello, I'm Michael and welcome to my photography channel. In today's video we're going to focus on cityscape photography and I'm going to share with you seven tips which you can practice to get better cityscape photos. And yeah, we're going to start right with the first tip which is you have to explore the city. For me that's the most important thing, really getting to know a place before I can really take great photos there. So typically what I do before a trip, I do a lot of research, figuring out where are the yeah, popular spots, you see those on Instagram and everywhere and I usually try to figure out where those are just to get a quick overview of the city and also to know where to book a hotel because typically where those spots are there's more interest and if I book a hotel I try to get pretty close to those so I can walk there but once I'm in the city it's really important to walk around go to those spots and yeah, have a look yourself so don't just go there having those photos in mind and yeah, going there when sunset, sunrise is and trying to get the same shot. Go there when the light's not ideal for photography and yeah, be curious, look around, see if you can find some new angles. And also what's important, what I would do, walk there and also go left, right, go down some alleys, really explore. So don't just head straight to those spots, see if you can find something else. When I'm in a city, typically, Per day I walk between 10 and 20 kilometers, yeah, just walking around sometimes without a clear aim and yeah, just see what I can find. And if I find something, I think I showed this in the Lisbon video, I get out my cell phone, go to Google Maps and I mark this place. So I use stars to mark it, but you could also have some yeah, custom marker, photo spot or something like that. And yeah, this makes sure that you can later find those again. Because for example here Venice, it's kind of a maze. So I just quickly walk through it once today on the way to the hotel. And yeah, there are many little alleys. You can go left, right. And yeah, you really have to make sure when you find something to know how to get back there. So really use the time. Typically you would do this during day. So when the light's too harsh for photography, I do it now around blue hour because I just arrived today so typically this is now the time to take photos but I don't know what to photograph yet so I'm using this time now to explore because there's much less people it's still crowded but nothing compared to when we arrived in the afternoon it was just crowded and sometimes this can also be hard to explore so good times to explore if you do a sunrise shoot for example afterwards use the time explore a bit more or if you head out for sunset in a city it's usually bright enough even after sunset or after blue hour you can still walk around try to find some spots that's what i'm gonna do now and yeah that's as i said first tip and it's really important spend a lot of time walking around exploring the city and be open to also find some new spots okay so that's what i'm gonna do now hopefully i find something okay tip number two is to get up early and take your photos in the morning because in a crowded city like Venice, for example, that's the only time where you really have places like this nearly for yourself and can take photos without any people. So yeah, don't sleep in, get up early and take your photos then. Also use the time afterwards, after sunrise, for example, to do some additional scouting, like I said, because then it's much less crowded. You can move around much quicker and yeah, it's also a much more pleasant experience. So that's tip number two. Let's move on. So the next tip I want to give you is to use the blue hour for your cityscape photography. So for example, take this morning, I don't have any cloud in the sky, so the sky is very boring, but during blue hour you can make use of that blue sky because it creates a nice color contrast to the incandescent lights in the city. So if you are there during blue hour, just wait for this time where the equilibrium is reached between the warm lights and the blue sky and take your photos and this can look 
fantastic. So make sure to be up either early or stay a little longer than sunset to make use of that blue hour because for me that's prime time for cityscape photography. So the next tip is about the use of long exposures. If you remember tip number two I said go out in the morning to take your photos because there's much less people on the streets. Well now I'm here in the evening shooting a scene where you can see behind me over the bridge there are a lot of people moving and yeah if I just use long exposures which comes naturally during blue hour it's getting dark now so I have exposure times of 10 seconds 20 seconds if I use those all those people if they keep moving will be out of the picture so you can use long exposures very practical you can even do so during day if you invest in a neutral density filter one of those extreme ones where you can get one minute exposures even in sunshine but you can also use long exposures creatively for example if you're shooting in a city where you have streets with cars moving by you can turn those cars into light streaks in the evening so if they have the lights on this is a nice dynamic element to those architecture photos where you have static buildings and yeah, having such movement in the photos is quite a nice balance for me so yeah that's it that's the next tip and now taking this photo and then show you the final result where you will see not so many people and one final thing also vary your exposure time so go with one second maybe two seconds and up to 30 seconds so 30 seconds would remove all the people but if you go with like two three seconds you have those people look like ghosts so you still see a hint of those moving through the frame this can also look nice so definitely experiment with different exposure times so the next tip is about equipment or lens choice to be honest when i photograph architecture and cities most of the time i use a wide angle lens because i just like to get those wide views with all the diagonals and the leading lines but in certain situations it's good to have a long lens with you and here's an example where i have this beautiful channel with a bridge in the background there's nice light from the side and if i just have the wide angle lens i would have a lot of stuff in the photo which really doesn't add to the subject and that's often the case in such cities here where you have a main subject and then there's just a lot of stuff going on around also people walking by and if you have a long lens you can hone in on the subject and really make sure you just have the important elements in the frame so that's the tip <laughs> always bring the long lens although it's a bit heavy but i always carry it around in cities also for landscapes it's the same it's good to have at least a 70 200 millimeter lens which i think is kind of a good range for zoom in in a cityscape photo okay for the next tip i've come back to where i started this video this time i'm prepared i'll take a photo and yeah the tip is about leading lines so if you photograph architecture or cityscapes always have a look for leading lines for example in this photo here i have those jetties here on both sides and they lead the viewer into the frame to the main subject which you have there in the background so here it's quite easy to find leading lines but if you're photographing architecture in general you'll usually find some and even if you just have a square like this one if you see all those structures between the stones you just get close to the ground you already have some leading lines sometimes there's some shapes or some patterns there in the floor so look for those get close to a wall of a building some fence you will usually find something in the city which you can use to point the viewer in and try to get those leading lights kind of diagonal into the frame this helps to create depth some perspective and yeah just makes the photo much more interesting as yeah if you just had some horizontals and verticals in the frame which usually works better for photos with a long lens i think but if you're shooting kind of wide like i do here make sure you have some of those leading lines so for the final tip i have something a bit more technical it's about how to photograph architecture and i've come to a very beautiful scene here where you have buildings to both sides and this nice street lamp and yeah what you want to avoid for such photos or architecture in general is perspective distortions or keystoning so if you photograph scenes like this make sure to have your camera completely level to keep the lines the vertical straight in the frame and if you have to angle your camera try to do so just a bit so you can later correct it in photoshop yeah that's it i'm now gonna take this photo it's already getting a bit more busy and yeah then i'm gonna show you the photo